I'll give you a bit of background. So funny enough, my dad was in the police force uh, for 36 years and he never ever expected me to follow in his footsteps. And then when I went to South Africa, sorry, when I went to the UK 30 years ago, I got involved in IT systems in a big way, deploying worldwide. And I would say, you know, we've always done security, but about three years ago, I can only describe as what I've seen as a tsunami of cyber attacks on small businesses. You know, big business gets done, but, you know, I care more about the small businesses. And, and for that reason, we, we, myself and my business partner, made it our mission to educate and protect at least a million people from hackers and scammers by 2023. So I'm, you know, I'm always grateful when I'm invited to do these sessions. You won't believe it since lockdown in the UK, which is well, the beginning of April, I've done, including this one today, is my 56th presentation on cybersecurity. So you can see I take this stuff very seriously, especially on the awareness side, because I feel that so many people are, are, do not know what they don't know until they know, and then normally it's too late. So uh, hmm, I, I, I don't know where to start. I get so many stories like this. And, and if I tell you that since lockdown, we've seen an increase of scams by 660%. I've been in this game for 30 years and I've never, ever, ever, ever seen anything like it. And you're right, they create this urgency. They create this, uh, this almost panic. And we, we've seen it now, especially in the UK as well with, with students, where they get uh, a letter or an email through to say, if they don't transfer this money, they lose their accommodation. So my first tip of today is going, especially when it comes to older people, Torsten, is to go on to Amazon and buy a book called Scam Me If You Can. Scam me if you can. It's by uh, Frank Abagnale. He's my hero. I don't know if you remember, he did that video, uh, sorry, the, the uh, movie called um, Catch Me if, if You Can uh, quite a few years ago with DiCaprio. And this, so he's written this book called Scam Me If You Can, and it's ideal for, for people older. Now, the thing is, we, you know, everybody gets hacked, but the problem that we have is when older people get done by scams, they don't have the time to make the money back where the younger people obviously do, you know, which, which is why it's so sad for me to hear so many cases. A friend of mine, he's an international speaker. You know, again, we deal a lot with romance fraud, but so many of his profiles has been copied on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and he gets people phoning him up from the US saying, you, you, it's like going crazy at him saying, you, you lost me $440,000, you know, where they've lost hundreds of thousands of pounds and and he never even knew about it because it's um it was his profile was was duplicated now uh, we we i work with a quite a, a let me put them uh, with an interesting bunch of people in the uk and we now uh, are approaching netflix to to make a documentary on this whole subject which is very very interesting for me uh, the, the subject today was all about the dark web now, if we can start about with the dark web, the first thing I'm going to show you now, I don't know if everybody can see the screen, and I'll gladly share all these links in the chat in a minute. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call a live attack map. And if you look at the date stamp, it's one minute out of date. These are actual attacks, cyber attacks that are going on as we are speaking. And now what I find fascinating is that look at this. Sonic says, this, uh, for, for the people that maybe don't know who Sonic Wall, Sonic Wall is a leading uh, firewall provider. We've been using them for over 20 years. And you can imagine wherever they've got firewalls dotted around the world, they, um, they have the ability to monitor these attacks real time. But look at this. this is, people say, ah, oh, China, this, and India, that. Look at this. Right now, most of the attacks are coming from the United Kingdom. Can you make this stuff up? Second, United States, France. From a receiving end, and again, you would think it's the other way around. At the moment, I mean, this changes during the day all the time. And uh, so India is being attacked most, United Kingdom State second, and United Kingdom third. Only a few weeks ago, this doctor phones me up. He says, from Australia, he says, Francis, I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned. You know, um, I, I'm married. I've got two beautiful young, young children. And I had this email to say that um, 
They've been watching me in my webcam. Uh, they've caught me masturbating and they're going to send this video out to all my friends. And you can imagine the poor guy. I could hear the panic in his voice. And I said, I'll, I'll, I'll change the name. I said, John, believe me, this is a complete fake. But let me explain to you. And, I, and I, I'll, I'll, I, I took him through the process of how things end up in the dark web and, and how he ended up getting that email. And again, a lot of people don't even know what the dark web is. Now, if I just tell you the dark web is where you can buy child pornography, you can buy any drug you want, you can buy AK-47 ammunition, you can buy whatever you like, and you can have it delivered at your house this afternoon. Simple as that. So, so when your data ends up on the dark web, it's really not a good place to be because people can buy it. So let me quickly share with you this one slide I was going to do. I don't know if anybody has seen this, but we're all using Zoom right now, right? Can everybody please put their hands up? Who has changed their Zoom password since the beginning of April this year, please? How many hands can you, well, you know already, Alina. So how many, can you see how many people have done it? Can you tell me what's, what's the answer? Just give me a percentage, like 10%, 20%, 30%. I don't see any hands up. <laughs> Well, that's, that's normal for me. I've done, like I said, I've done 56 of these sessions. Now, I promise I'm not, I'm trying really hard not to make this stuff scary, but it's, I'm just going to give you the facts. Now, tell me, Elena, can you just put you off, off mute for a second? How many keys do I need to get into your front door? <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> no, no, just one, one. It's normally one, right? How many keys do I need to get into your, if you had a, if you're in your office? It's normally one, right? One, yeah. How many keys do I need to get in your car? Awesome. One, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the problem that we have is that most people use the same password for their baby alarm, their Netflix, their Amazon, their email account, their LinkedIn, their Twitter, their Facebook, and their Zoom account. Now, if Zoom gets compromised and they lose 500,000 email addresses and passwords and yours happen to be one of them, what the hackers will do is they'll just go and brute force go through all these accounts that you've even forgotten about that you ever had and now they're into your entire world and it only took them one key. Do you see the problem here? So let's move on. Any questions or everybody else said, okay, at this point. So let me explain to you now why or, or what happens next. Okay. So these 500 email addresses are passed. And I mean, the same goes for so many companies right now, right? Gets lost and is now for sale on the dark web. And now, of course, what the scammers and hackers will do, not only will they try and hack into your accounts, but they'll now start sending emails. They'll send millions and millions and millions of emails. So who's ever heard of a website called haveibeenporn.com? I need, I need a volunteer. I need an email address, please. I promise I'm not going to show your passwords, but I will show you if, you, if you've ever been compromised. I think Tos is aware of the website, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let me get a chat. Uh, let me just see the chat. Uh, can I, I, I need a volunteer? Somebody can put their email address in the chat, then we can uh, we can have a look, and I'll explain to you the whole journey. Come on, be brave. Any be volunteers? Brave. <laughs> it won't be painful. All right. Hi, right, Francis. I'll do it. There you I go. Email from Milan, actually, in the chat. Yeah, that's that's who's that? Myla. Myla. Yeah. Thank you, Myla. And remember, everybody that's on the call today, and even if you're watching a recording, please go to this website and type in your personal, your Hotmail, your, your Yahoo, your, your uh, kids. Show your kids this, especially your kids, please, because we need, I think, we need to train our kids from as young as five. So let me now put this in here, right? Let's watch this. Okay, wow, this is a good one. So... 
Is it Myla? Is that the right pronunciation? Myla, can you unmute yourself? Yes, my full name is Milan. This is ah, Milan. Oh, sorry. I was, uh, how are you? Thanks for volunteering. I'm really grateful. Now, let me show you what's happened here. Your email address has been compromised seven times, and I bet you never knew that. I, so, right? I know all of this. I have changed oh, my password since then. Ah, brilliant. You see, there's one very clever person. So, look at this. So, you've got January 2019, October. Look at this. You know, and, and, and this is not his fault. The only time it's his fault is if he was using the same password and the same email address for all these different accounts. But look at this, you know, even even going back to where I'm looking at the most recent one, you know, January 29 collection one. I mean, I don't know about you. I've never heard of them. But look at this. They lost 2.7 billion records. And unless you this is one of the points I'm going to come to in a minute, unless you use a password manager that monitors the dark web for your passwords, you will never know. So you can't fix something you don't know. And that's why I always say to people about why is it that people, you know, with, with, with severe illnesses like cancer or something else live longer? Why? Because of early detection. If we can detect an illness faster, we live longer. And the same here with cybersecurity. If we put the right solutions in place that can identify and alert or kill instantly or, you know, within 24 hours, our, our risk level drops significantly. So this is how it happens. So, of course, you know, let me show you something else now. This is where it gets interesting. Who's ever, ever heard of this website called showdown.io? No? Any hands up? No? Okay. i tell you what. Spend some, you can sign up a free account. What this site does, and it's legal, I don't know, it's, nobody's taken it down ever yet. This is legal. This has been up for years. And what you do, you go and sign yourself a free account, and you can log on to webcams, baby alarms, industrial control systems around the world right now, and look at whatever you want to look at. And you'll find a lot of stuff is no passwords, or it's admin, admin, or admin password, or admin, no password. You can't make this stuff up, but let me tell you the story. So, you know, in the UK, I was I was asked uh, in January time, I was asked by a local, you know, community center to go and install their um, their their internet route. And of course, I said with pleasure, you know, I'll do that. And I don't know if you guys where you are um, have Talk Talk or a similar company. You won't believe what was the username and the password of that internet router. Admin and admin. Which means that if it wasn't technical, it was it wasn't for a technical person like me to, to go there and do the installation and change the default password, that that router would have ended up on this site, because what Shodan does, every 24 hours they scrape the planet Internet of Things, and they list it publicly for free here for anybody to log on or hack or whatever you want to do, because people don't change their default passwords. And that's why these things end up on the dark web. So my advice to you, when we finish this call today or this evening, don't wait after this evening, go and check every single device that you've ever bought and make sure they've changed the default username and password. Because otherwise, do you like it when people look at you when you don't know? Not fun. So let me move on. So a lot of people say to me, okay, you know, the stuff has been compromised. You know, how do I, how, how can I even fix this problem? Now I'm going to share with you. And I think this is why, you know, I've, I've shown you the problem. The pro problem is massive. I mean, I can give you case study after case study after case study. Uh, and, and, and again, if I just rewind a little bit, if we go and look at say thing, things like invoice fraud, I don't know how big it is in Belgium or the other countries of people are online right now, but in the UK, invoice fraud is a massive issue. If we look at right now, cybercrime in the UK that we know about is about 36 billion loss a year. So if you take all the other crimes put together, it's less than cybercrime in the UK, which is frightening. But you know what? And, I, and again, I work with banks. I work with councils. 
I work, I sit on a security panel with 40 other top people in the UK. And the success rate of any prosecution is a very close to a zero number. Very close to zero. And that's why I keep on saying the more we can educate people on this stuff, the more we can tell them what the threats are, the more we can tell them how to actually prevent it and putting better solutions in, the more likely we are to, to save our, our family and our friends and our children from, from what, what's going on because it's, it's just off the scale. So let me, let me show you something else. This is one of my favorite sites ever. How secure is my password.net? And again, I promise you, I've been using this for many years. If you type in any, anything in there, you'll never, you'll never know, or they don't capture the data. That's a fact, okay? So I'm now going to show you a strong password, and I'm going to show you a weak password, and I'm going to show you how to, to generate something that's almost impossible to crack. Now, let's, uh, I need a volunteer. Anybody want to volunteer, take themselves off mute? I'm going to show you how to generate. Denise. Yep, I'll volunteer. <laughs> All right, Denise, would you mind uh, giving me a password that you've used in the past that you're no longer using? Oh, gosh. Um, okay. Um, like an easy one. No, oh, an easy one. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of one. Um, Oh gosh! Oh. Hang on, okay. I want to I want to butt in here and say this is this exactly shows the problem. When you're asked for a password, it's so difficult to think of something, and it's it's re it's always an interruption to something else that you're really doing. Yeah. The fallback is to choose something easy because it is such a such a pain. I, well. I actually have a recommendation for that if you don't have a password manager. To, to make a base password that you always forget and then just add two characters of the website to it. So like take the three characters from the first names of three people who are close to you, add a number, add a plus symbol, and that bit you always remember. And then you add two characters like FB for Facebook or something like that. It's not ultra secure, but it means that you, you don't have the cognitive load every time you have to think of something. You just have to add two characters you can work it out yourself and it's it's secure enough it's not the ultimate solution but anyway that's austin i i'm, I'm going to give you the answer today i'm glad you mentioned that because I, i've got a real thing about password managers and you won't believe if like i said if i've done this presentation for i don't know a thousand people maybe four percent of them right now are using password managers and then they're not even locking it down properly and i'm going to share that with you i'm going to show you how to do it today and one and password I mean, is really expensive. No, it's not, not cheap. at all. It's 50 euros or something a pop, isn't it? No, 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 no. I mean, no, that's right. that's probably the, the. I'll show you. It's uh, it's my, my opinion. It's worth every single penny. But I'll explain in a minute. I'll, I'll show you how to. I don't remember any passwords. I just remember one long password. Yeah. And I remember my face, which is helpful. And I use my multi-authentication codes, which I'm going to go through in a second. And once you have that in place, you'd never have to remember another password. And I'm going to demonstrate it for everybody so they can see how it's done. It's so easy. So, I, so Denise, are you haven't escaped here yet? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no, just make up any word for me. It's fine. Okay. I would normally put something like something I love, so trust probably, but use a five instead of an S. So what trust did you say? Yeah. So T U R T R U and then five, I use a five T and T. then maybe yeah and then probably plus I don't know twenty plus plus, plus what two five plus uh, oh okay I thought you meant five five okay you see uh, that's a bit of a problem Denise because a brute force attacker and let me explain what that is it's a piece of software if you want to learn how to crack passwords really easy go onto youtube and say how do i crack passwords it takes you to a website where you download a piece of software it's called the brute force attacker you install it on your pc or mac you point it to what you want to crack and press a button off it goes now if you had to do that denise that would password would take two seconds to crack not surprised <laughs> now i'm gonna i'm gonna show you something 
for years and years ago, if you asked me three, four years ago, Francis, what is a good password? I would have said, oh, 13 characters long, uppercase, lowercase, blah, blah, blah. But like Torsten said, I can't remember. I can't remember what I did yesterday. Never mind trying to remember a 13 character password, okay? So, Denise, I want you to look around yourself. Yep. And I want you to name me four objects that are not related. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> four objects not related. Um, jeans. Say again, jeans. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, jeans. Chai. <laughs> chai. No, they're kind of clothing. They're the same thing, yeah? No, chai is a drink. <laughs> oh, chai. How do you spell chai? Never heard. C H A I. <laughs> Okay, I'll write it down, no problem. That sounds good. You show us. <laughs> Next one. Um, heater. <laughs> so heater. Yeah. <laughs> is it a bit cold there, is it? Um, I'm in my, uh, well, I'm working from home, so I'm in my room. Um, <laughs> okay, heater. One more. Fly spray. <laughs> Fly spray. Okay, let's just use the word spray. I'm trying to make them simple, okay? Sure. Why do I say words? Because you know what? People think in pictures. They don't think in words, believe it or not. So watch this now. So we type in the word genes. I'm just doing it all lowercase, right? Genes, if I can spell G-A-N-S. Genes would take three hundredths of a microseconds to crack. Now we add the word chai. Now we're up to two minutes already. Watch this now. Here comes the magic. We're adding the third word, heater. We've gone to 1,000 years, and now we add the word spray. Now, I don't know about you, I'm going to be long dead by then, and they might dig up my pulses. But now, people say, oh, but I need a capital, lowercase, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what we do, we make the last character capital, G-E-A-N, capital S, Chai, capital I, Heater, H-E-A-T-E, -E, capital R, Look at that, only three words, and we're already sitting at 44 million years. So now we go to spray capital Y. That's 17 quadrillion years. And ladies and gentlemen, that's how you make a really easy password to remember, but in, almost impossible for a hacker to guess. Is that useful? Denise? I'm a bit speechless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about uh, the symbols and uh, normally it... yeah you can okay great question so what i do is sometimes i say why don't you uh, if i live at number 52 i put a five at the end and i put a two at the beginning look at that i mean it just makes it almost impossible but let's forget that now for a second because so this is my company here um, security everywhere and you know, like I said earlier, before we started, what my our whole game here is to bring the best security solutions on the planet uh, to the small business or even single user around the world. We're already in 10 countries, but anyway, so, so Identity Defender, so we evaluated so many different uh, password managers and we came up with the best one and that's called Keeper, which I'm gonna demonstrate in a second. And I don't know how much you said, I mean, you can buy cheaper ones, but we you can buy it directly from them if you want, but they charge you yearly and they charge you more. So we charge uh, £4.97 in the UK. And what makes it so unique is that it includes secure file storage and dark web monitoring, which I'm going to demonstrate. So once you've installed it, the very first thing, I mean, Alina asked a brilliant question earlier. She said, so many people, so when it pops up, you know, in, in, in uh, Chrome, when it says, do I need to store my password? You say, um, look, most people say yes. Please, can I beg you today, never, ever, ever to say yes again. Why? Because if you, I don't know if you know this, but if you click on in Chrome, you click on those three dots. I don't know if I want any volunteers. You go to settings, watch this. And you go into autofill. And then you click on passwords. You can see I've turned mine off. Most people on this planet, including Chrome, Safari, all the others, have this turned off. Now, I'm known as a white hat hacker. I do everything I promise you for purely for demonstration purposes. I will send you an email. You'll click on that link. I've now installed the keylogger on your PC or your Mac. 
when I'm ready, I'm going to go into your browser settings and I'm going to look and it's this stuff is stored in clear text. So by the way, on your PC or Mac, and now I've just scraped every single place you've ever been to, including the passwords. And that's not cool. So please, this is my, this is, if you do nothing of this whole presentation, go and get yourself identity defender and suck all these passwords into it when you do the installation and then go and delete all these passwords. But let me show you how it works. So once you've installed it, the app um, goes across any browser, it goes across any device, you only pay for one per person. And if you go into, for instance, uh, the data vault, I'll show you. So for me, using a password manager, there's two massive benefits. The first benefit for me is, is the security, obviously. But the second one is saving time. I'm lazy. So if I want to go to, say, LinkedIn, all I have to do is type in L-I-N-K-E. You see how it just comes up straight away with my LinkedIn? So I click on the little arrow there. So not only does it take me to LinkedIn, but it also logs me in. I do not know the password for LinkedIn, I promise you. I've... I don't know any of my passwords. I just know this long password. And what this does, every four hours, this logs out. Let me just close it for a second. Every four hours, uh, my password manager would actually log me out so that I have to re-log in. Now, people always say, oh, but what happens if they get the master password? Now, this is the, this is the secret. And this is a, there's never enough time on these calls. Uh, I don't know, how many people, can we just see a hand? How many people right now are using multi-factor authentication for any of their systems? They also call two-factor authentication. What's so that? just for the people that don't know, multi-factor authentication is very similar to what the banks have been using for years. So it's something I have and something I know. I know my username, I know my password maybe, but something I have is in this hand here. And if you can see, this is an app that I downloaded. It's called Authenticator. Authenticator, when I set it up, you can look at this. Everything I touch has a multi-factor authenticator set up. Why? Because there's no way anybody can get into my systems unless they put a gun against my head and ask me for my face and then look at my code. And only then can they log on to my even my password manager or to my email or to my LinkedIn or Facebook, or WhatsApp, or anything. It's all locked down here. And this is free to set up. And most people don't even know about this stuff. So the point is that when I, every time I log on, you can see right at the top of my list is Keeper. And you can see that code only lasts for 30 seconds. Once that code is regenerated, it never, ever repeats again. So I put the code in. Only when I put the code in will I be able to log in. Now, what's really cool, the very first time you, you set this up, and listen, I was no saint, believe me. It goes through all your existing username and passwords, and it finds all the existing passwords that, I, that have already been compromised by or already for sale on the dark web, which means you can then go in your own time, and I, take it, and I recommend you do it as fast as possible, and you can go and change all these passwords, because otherwise, you just don't know. Okay. And then the other nice thing about this, the moment this happened to me only a couple of days ago, um, again, another rugby club we look after, I had their password um, recorded and their password was compromised. So it popped up straight away and said, hey, you need to go and change this password, which I did. And I logged onto their router and I, and, I, and I created a much, much stronger password for them because whoever set it up before didn't set it up properly. So not only that, there you can see as well all my, you know, the current state. There's still, I've got work to do. You know, there's some here that I still need to improve on. But at the moment, my current rate is sitting at 95% strong of all my passwords. And you see, I'm no saint. I've still got to get better. The other thing which I like is, you know, you can include your payment cards. And, and here's the best bit for me. It's about sharing. Because, again, I don't need to know my passwords. But... What you can do, you can share certain passwords with your customers. Or, for instance, here are some personal files, you know, like I've got copies of, of driver's licenses. Here are my old logins. So if we look at this login, I'm going to show you something about, again, about generating passwords. Let me find another one. Yeah, here. So, again, I never need to know the password. But let's say 
Uh, let's have a look at this password. Let's see how strong it is. That's currently in use. So that's quite a strong password. Let me try and find one that's not so strong. So you can see what I'm. Uh, see, I used to use one pass, but I stopped using them. Yeah, this one doesn't look like a very strong one. Let's try this one. And then I'm going to show you. Okay, eight months to crack. It's still not bad, but for me, anything under a trillion years is not good enough. So now let's go and fix this. Let me just show you. I'm just waiting for this to go. So how do we fix this? Watch this. So if I click edit, I can then, you see the little dice here? If I click on the little dice, look at this. It generates, I can make it, it's normally 20 characters, which I recommend as a minimum. But if you want to, you can make it, you know, stupidly strong. But let's leave it at 20. So if we now copy this, I'll even show you the password because I'm not going to save it. If we now go back to that, you see, remember it was eight months. Here's my new password. It was generated by Keeper and it's taken me from eight months to 42 quintillion years. But remember, I still don't have to remember passwords at all. So coming back to this point here, uh, which I just wanted to finish on, uh, do I want to save discard? Yes. Is that, you know, I, I'm now sharing passwords with my family, with my business partner, and still you can now even share passwords and login details with people without them ever even having to see the passwords, which for me is absolutely brilliant. So that, to me, this is the easiest and the most inexpensive way to not only monitor the dark web, monitor, manage all your passwords, which is the key to your life. And then of course, finally, to, to at least have that alertness so that you can go and fix it if, it's, if it becomes you know, uh, for sale or broken on the internet.